Hello and welcome back. My name is Chris Parker with ParkerPhotographic.com and this is chapter 11 of 12 for my free Luminar Neo course. In this Luminar Neo tutorial, you're going to discover how to use layers in Luminar Neo creatively. And if you're ready, let's do it. In Luminar Neo, we have the ability to add layers to our image to create something new and different based on our creative vision. We also have an option under layer properties to instantly remove the background. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. First, let's take a look at the layers which are accessible on the left side here of Luminar Neo. All right, so we have a thumbnail preview of our original file here. And in essence, this thumbnail preview or this image is the first layer. So a layer consists of data, information, or pixels, in this case, a photo image. So that's our first layer. We can then create new files and add them as a new layer in Luminar Neo or use the included layers to place on top of our original image. So we have our base image and then our new layer above it. Now, the settings that you apply to this new layer will then blend together with the layer below to create a new image. So let me show you how this works. So we're going to click right here and that's going to list all the layers that you can add to your image. Some of them have see all, which will list additional layers that can be applied to your image. You can also add your own layer or your own image file by clicking on load image. So if you've downloaded something online like a sun flare, or maybe some textures, you can load them into Luminar Neo to use those. And once you have the ones that you want to use, just go ahead and click on it and it will automatically be added as a new layer. So now we can see that this thumbnail preview represents that new layer and it's stacked above the original layer. And based on the settings for this layer, we can then see how they blend together. So the default settings for this layer is 100 for the opacity and you can lower the opacity to show less of that overlay and more of the layer below it. Underneath that, we have our blending modes. If you've ever used Photoshop before, then you may be familiar with blending modes. And in Luminar Neo, we have quite a few, not as many as in Photoshop, but we can use these different blending modes to blend that layer in with the layer below. Now, this particular blending mode screen works well for this particular layer and some of the other ones as well. Let's go ahead and add another one because you can stack multiple layers on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and add some stardust to my image here. And now we have two layers blending in with the layer below. Now, I picked out this one in particular because there's a lot of black in it and a lot of these layers have that black in it. And that's why screen is set to the default. So if I change this to normal, you'll see that black in that file and screen is used to blend or remove that black from that layer. So it blends in nicely with the image and the other layer below it. Now there's a few different ways that you can alter the size of this layer as well as do other things with it as well, like flip it on the horizontal axis or the vertical. And then down here in image mapping, we have three different options. By default, stretch is selected. So if I click on that, it's not doing anything. But if I click on fit, it's going to change the size or the aspect ratio of that layer to its original size. So right now, it's not filling in the top and the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layer here by right clicking on it and clicking hide layer or remove layer or if you wanted to, you could duplicate it as well. I just want to go ahead and remove it for now so we can see these sparkles a little better and we can see that they're not being applied up here, but you can click and drag this up to the top so it doesn't have that hard edge like it does down here. But we can actually remove these sparkles down here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So that's why we have these different image mapping options so we can adjust this layer according to our own needs. And the reason why you may not want to use stretch is because it's going to take the elements inside of that layer and it's going to stretch them out to fill in the aspect ratio of your image. So it's going to take on a different shape. Might be a little bit hard to see, 
but if I click on stretch here, the shape of these circles are more oval now versus round. Now, if you don't want to change the shape of those elements, you can click on fill and it will enlarge that layer to cover the entire image. The only problem is it's now being cut off on the ends here, the left and the right side, but you can click and drag it around to include the elements that you want as part of your layer. You can also click on a corner and resize it this way or click on a side and pull it in or out. But what that's doing is it's stretching out that layer. When you select a side, it's stretching more so than fitting in with the corners. All right, so let's say you have everything positioned exactly where you want it, but like in this image, we have a stardust on our eye and we want to remove it. Well, you can do that with your masking tools. So we're gonna select the brush in this case, and we can either paint on or paint off or erase. So I wanna get rid of that stardust, so I'm going to erase it. I'm gonna adjust my brush size here, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in this area to erase the overlay from that area. Maybe we wanna get rid of it down here as well. So you just paint over that area to remove it and then paint back on if you wanna add it back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that layer so I can show you how to remove the background, which you can do via the masking tab. So we have two options, portrait background and background removal AI. So this one, of course, will use AI technology to recognize where that background is and instantly remove it. Now, sometimes it does a really good job, sometimes not so much. So you may need to use one or the other depending on the image. For this image, I'm gonna go ahead and click on portrait background. It's going to analyze the image. And then once you click on remove, it will automatically remove that background for you. But as you can see, it's not perfect. Now, if you use the removal background AI tool, it may not be perfect as well. In either case, you can use the refinements brush to fine tune that masking of your subject so you can remove the background completely. So transition will adjust the transition from the subject to the background. Object will target the subject and then background you will target the background or the removal of the background. So I'm gonna select object and then I can use my brush and resize it here, of course. And then I can paint in the area that should be included as the foreground. So once I have that done, I go ahead and release. Luminar Neo will then analyze that area and include it in the foreground. And when I click on portrait background again, we can see that it's updated the subject to be included and the background is still removed. So I still need to go in and do some tweaks to the foreground and background masks in order to remove the background completely. All right, so once you've done editing your image to perfection, it's time to share that image with the world. And you can do that by watching this video tutorial next and learn how to export your images so you can share them with the world.